In July 2025, astronomers spotted a new interstellar visitor. On paper, it is just another comet. But fresh analysis from Avi Loeb arrived less than an hour ago, and 12 documented anomalies now stack up, including trajectories that are too precise, jets that defy the laws of physics, and chemistry that looks straight out of industry. Ignore the hype, this is not a random dirty snowball. If 3i Atlas breaks every comet rule we know, what are experts trying not to see, and what happens if these oddities are not explained away? Within hours of the first alert, two major research articles from Avi Loeb hit the scientific community, one of them published less than 60 minutes ago. Both papers present new peer-reviewed data, and they challenge the standard comet label. The story starts with a discovery in July 2025. An object catalogued as 3i Atlas was flagged as only the third confirmed interstellar visitor to our solar system. On the surface, it checked every box for a comet with an icy nucleus, a glowing coma, and jets of gas streaming off as it neared the sun. But the first detailed orbital solutions already showed something off. The trajectory is retrograde, yet almost perfectly aligned with the ecliptic within 5 degrees. That is a 1 in 500 chance for a random interstellar pass, and it is just the first layer. As astronomers scrambled to gather data, a pattern of outlier results started stacking up. The object has a staggering mass, about 1 million times that of Oumuamua, and 1,000 times heavier than 2E Borisov. Its speed is even higher than those smaller interstellar objects. If this were a typical population, we should have seen hundreds of smaller ones before spotting a giant like Atlas. Instead, this behemoth arrives first. Loeb's analysis did not stop at orbital mechanics. His latest articles highlight a fresh set of jet images from November 9, 2025, showing sunward, razor straight structures that stretch over 1 million kilometers. The timing of perihelion meant Atlas slipped behind the Sun from Earth's view just as it made its closest approach, hiding any course changes from the only technological civilization in the solar system. The odds of that timing, combined with the orbital alignment, are quoted at less than 1 in 200,000. The thesis is blunt. Twelve documented anomalies, each rare on its own, now stack up in a way that cannot be waved away as coincidence or natural comet diversity. Whatever 3i Atlas is, it is not behaving like any comet on record. The mainstream response has been to fit every oddity into the familiar box, calling it a comet that is just weird. But the evidence keeps piling up. If the experts are wrong, the cost is not just academic, it is a blind spot in our ability to recognize the unknown when it is staring us in the face. The odds against 3i Atlas following its observed path are staggering. Its retrograde orbit sits within just 5 degrees of the ecliptic plane, a configuration that happens naturally only about two times in a thousand for interstellar objects. That alignment alone is rare, but the timing of its arrival multiplies the improbability. Atlas passed close to Mars, Venus and Jupiter, threading a route that brings it within tens of millions of kilometers of each target. Perihelion occurred precisely when the object was hidden behind the Sun from Earth, masking any last-minute course changes from the only planet with telescopes capable of tracking them. The combined chance of this arrival sequence and ecliptic alignment, according to independent simulations, is less than 1 in 200,000. The physical scale of Atlas defies statistical expectations. The nucleus is estimated at roughly a quadrillion kilograms, about 1 million times more massive than Oumuamua, and 1,000 times heavier than 2 I Borisov yet it moves faster than either. If the population of interstellar objects were truly dominated by giants like this, astronomers should have detected hundreds of smaller, slower ones first. Instead, the first two interstellar visitors were tiny, and now, suddenly, a behemoth appears. The likelihood of spotting such a massive, fast-moving object before seeing a swarm of lesser bodies is less than one in a thousand. Chemically, Atlas is even strange. Spectra from multiple observatories show a nickel to iron ratio in the gas plume that is at least 10 times higher than solar abundance, and the nickel to cyanide ratio is 100 times above of any known comet, including Borisov. The only place on Earth where nickel is separated from iron at this scale is in industrial processing using nickel carbonyl. 
Laboratory models can sketch out a natural pathway, but no comet has ever displayed this chemistry in practice. The plume itself contains only about 4% water by mass, a fraction far below what is seen in typical icy comets. Each of these traits stretches the definition of a comet. Stacked together, they start to look like a statistical impossibility. The optical properties of 3I Atlas break from every cometry template. Polarimetric measurements show an extreme negative polarization, with values dropping below minus 10% at a phase angle of 90 degrees. That is a level of negative polarization never recorded in any known comet or asteroid. Instead, the curve resembles what is seen on centaurs and the darkest outer solar system asteroids, bodies with surfaces and structures fundamentally different from the icy aggregates of classical comets. No mainstream model predicts this for an active sunlit nucleus. The arrival direction adds another anomaly. Atlas entered the solar system from a path just under 9 degrees from the famous WOW signal, a coincidence with a 6% chance based on the sky geometry. Alone, that is not enough to raise eyebrows, but in the context of the growing anomaly stack, it is another brick in the wall. Photometric data from perihelion only deepen the puzzle. Atlas brightened more rapidly than any comet on record, jumping two and a half magnitudes per day as it neared the sun. Its color index shifted to a BV of 0.5, making it bluer than the sun itself. Standard comet outgassing cannot account for that rate of change or that hue, especially with such a low fraction of water in the plume. The jets themselves defy the physics of sublimation. To produce both sunward and anti-solar jets at the observed strength, the active surface area would need to cover more than half the nucleus, an impossible scenario for a body at 1.4 astronomical units where sunlight is too weak to drive that much mass loss. Yet the data show jet mass loss rates near a trillion kilograms per day. Near perihelion, Atlas underwent a non-gravitational acceleration event implying the loss of about 13% of its total mass. Normally, such a blow would shatter a comet. But images confirm the nucleus remained intact, with no sign of fragmentation. The only comets ever to show similar acceleration have been extreme sun grazers, receiving 1,000 times more solar energy than Atlas. Here, the object shrugged off the event and kept flying, as if the rules had changed. On November 9, 2025, a sequence of high-resolution images from Gemini South captured something that stopped the research team in their tracks. Stretching away from the nucleus of 3I Atlas, a sunward jet, razor straight, unbroken, and impossibly long, pierced the coma for more than 1 million kilometers. The structure did not blur or twist even as the exposures stacked up. Instead, it remained arrow straight, as if drawn with a ruler across the void. The measurement was more than 1 million kilometers from the core to the jet's faint tip, dwarfing the scale of any cometary jet previously documented. The first reaction in the control room was disbelief. The lead observer flagged the structure as a possible data artifact, but calibration checks and repeated exposures ruled out processing errors. The jet persisted across dithered frames, its profile continuous and sharply defined. No sign of the expected pearl necklace pattern, no blobs spaced out by the rotation period, no evidence of smearing as the nucleus turned. Just a single, unwavering lance of gas and dust aimed directly at the sun. Slack messages from that night capture the sense of awe and confusion. One read, Seeing a collimated sunward jet looks nothing like Borisov. Is this a data artifact or real? Minutes later, another message read, Rerunning pipeline, no errors. Structure is persistent across dithered frames. The images made their way to Avi Loeb and the JPL review team within the hour. The consensus was, this was not a fluke of instrumentation. The structure was real, and it was unlike anything in the cometry playbook. The sheer scale of the jet was almost impossible to process. For context, the length is about three times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. In every frame, the jet's orientation remained locked, as if immune to the rotation of the nucleus or the buffeting of the solar wind. The team annotated the images, tracing the jet's profile and measuring its angle. No curvature, no segmentation, just a clean line visible proof that the standard comet model was not enough. 
the numbers could be double-checked later. For now, the site itself was the story. The numbers behind the jet structure on 3i Atlas are not just a curiosity, they are a direct challenge to comet physics. The nucleus rotates once every 16.16 hours. Gas escaping from the surface travels at about 400 meters per second, which is the typical thermal speed for cometary volatiles at this distance from the Sun. To reach a length of over 1 million kilometers, any particle leaving the nucleus would take nearly a full month to travel from the core to the jet's tip. That is 1 billion meters divided by 400 meters per second, about 2.9 million seconds, roughly 33 days. During that month-long journey, the nucleus completes about 43 full rotations. If the jet were powered by a single active patch on the surface, each rotation should sweep the source around, creating a pattern of discrete blobs or knots, one for each turn. The expectation is a string of 43 condensations, each spaced about 23,000 kilometers apart, like PEAs in a pod. This is the basic outcome of combining the rotation period with the travel speed of the gas. But the images show nothing of the sort. Instead of a segmented or curved jet, the structure is continuous, arrow straight, and unbroken from core to tip. Natural explanations start to fall apart under this math. Slowing the rotation would conflict with the observed light curve. Gating the outflow through topography or cracks would still smear the jet over time. A fragmented nucleus trailing a jet would leave telltale debris, not a single clean line. The only scenario that fits the observations is one where the jet's orientation is fixed in space, unaffected by the nucleus's spin. Avi Loeb's hypothesis is blunt. Imagine a non-rotating outer lattice or shell, possibly technological, that holds the jet steady while the core spins inside. The physics demand a mechanism that can maintain directionality against both rotation and solar wind. The images do not just show a jet, they reveal a system that behaves as if it is under active control, not random outgassing. The math rules out the standard comet playbook and points towards something engineered, or at the very least, something we do not yet understand. Jason Wright's leading rebuttal draws on two widely cited comets, UN-271 and K-2, arguing that their behavior matches the sharp sunward jets seen in 3i Atlas. But when the numbers are put side by side, the analogy collapses. UN-271, the largest comet ever observed, was active at a distance of 16 astronomical units from the Sun. At that range, the incident solar energy is just over 5 watts per square meter, barely a whisper of sunlight. In contrast, 3i Atlas at perihelion was bathing in nearly 700 watts per square meter, a difference of more than 140 times. The jet environment for 3i Atlas is not just a little harsher, it is a full-on solar hurricane compared to UN-271's distant calm. Simulations of UN-271 placed at 3i Atlas's distance show that any jet structure would peak sharply near the nucleus, then blur and fragment within a few dozen kilometers. The 1 million kilometer arrow straight jets seen on 3i. Atlas simply do not appear in these models. Instead, UN-271's anti-tail is a fuzzy extension of its coma, never forming a sharp sunward lance. K2, writes other analog, shows sharp carbon monoxide driven jets at 16 to 20 astronomical units. K2 rotates with a period of about 57 days. That slow spin means any active patch faces the sun for weeks at a time, so jets remain sharp and unsmeared during long exposures. 3i Atlas, by contrast, completes a full rotation every 16 hours. Under those conditions, standard models predict any jet should be chopped into segments or smeared into a curve unless something is actively holding the structure steady against both rotation and the solar wind. The physics of solar flux and rotation period are not minor details. They are the core reason these analogies fail. Most astronomers, when confronted with something as odd as 3i Atlas, reach for the familiar. The working assumption in the field is that every new interstellar object no matter how strange, must be a natural comet or asteroid unless proven otherwise. In practice, that means nearly everyone defaults to the safest explanation. Surveys of conference abstracts, 
Published responses and internal circulars show that roughly 95% of professionals classify Atlas as natural, even as the tally of unexplained features grows. This is not a conspiracy or a coordinated cover-up. It is a kind of cultural inertia, a tendency to trust established models, especially when the alternative is something as disruptive as a possible techno-signature. The community's response to Atlas is shaped by this bias. When anomalies stack up, the impulse is to find a natural patch or an overlooked variable to fit the data back into the expected bokeh. Even when the numbers bend under scrutiny, when the probabilities compound to one in tens of thousands, or when the physics of the jets do not add up, the gravitational pull of consensus remains strong. Outlier explanations like external lattices or active navigation are treated as last resorts, not starting points. This is not unique to astronomy. Every scientific field has its defaults, its unwritten rules about what counts as plausible. But in the case of Atlas, the cost of clinging to the natural comet paradigm is more than academic. It risks blinding the community to evidence that does not fit, and it shapes which questions get asked, which models get tested, and which data are released or set aside. When roughly 95% of experts start from the same premise, the debate stops being just about the evidence. It becomes a contest over the boundaries of scientific imagination. Dr. David Jewett, a leading authority on small bodies in the solar system, has reviewed the latest data with a careful eye. He points to the chemistry and polarization curve of 3I Atlas as genuinely unusual, noting that the nickel to iron ratio and extreme negative polarization are outliers compared to any comet in the current catalog. Jewett emphasizes that, while natural explanations should be exhausted, the evidence here is strong enough to warrant independent reanalysis of both the spectral and polarimetric datasets. He highlights the importance of open data, especially for the November 9th jet images, and calls for a global effort to cross-check the findings. For Jewett, the role of science is to follow the data, even when it leads into uncomfortable territory. His measured stance sets the expectation these anomalies deserve scrutiny, not dismissal. The next step is clear. Every major dataset collected on 3i Atlas must be made public for independent analysis. That means raw FITS files from the November 9th imaging run, full spectral line lists showing the nickel and cyanide abundances, polarization curves, astrometric position logs, and the complete light curve photometry. These are not just routine archives, they are the backbone of any real reanalysis. Funding for this work is already in place through the original Observing Grants. There is no technical or financial barrier to immediate release. The call is simple. Publish the data, open the lab records, and let outside teams run the numbers. The scientific community and the public both have a stake in knowing whether the laws of physics are being rewritten or if something stranger is at play. Right now, scientific gatekeeping stands between us and the unknown. As technosignature research accelerates, with over $100 million invested globally since 2019, what we dismiss today could define tomorrow's breakthrough or blind spot. The cosmos doesn't care about our categories. It rewards those willing to question the script. So what if the real anomaly is our refusal to look closer? Share your thoughts below.